have story time coming up right now with Becca Her. Becca! Come on here, Becca! 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 Coming to the right. Ah, come right here. Well, Becca, we want to hear your story. Lives are changing here every week. And Becca, as you know, she just sang here. What, didn't she do a great job? <laughs> Becca is just a blessing to all of us, but she didn't always start out that way. <laughs> so let's hear it. Let's give it up one more time for Becca. Okay. Hi, everyone. I'm Becca. Hi, Becca. Hi. Um, okay, so I'm just going to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, it goes way back to when I was about six. Um, I grew up in a Christian home. I, I remember being like six years old, praising God in my bed at night. And for some reason, <laughs> when I was six and the lights were off, I thought no one could hear me. So like I would be singing this song, just like praising the Lord in my bed. And like, I know my mom heard me now when I think about it. <laughs> And I just remember having a relationship with Jesus when I was little. And, um, it was so special to me. And it, like, it wasn't even, a, there wasn't a doubt in my mind. I was just, he was like my best friend. And um, I remember being bullied when I was in elementary school. And I was praying to Jesus, please send me a friend that's nice to me. And, um, I was kind of a tomboy. So uh, I don't know. I didn't really have any friends. <laughs> um, but anyways, Jesus was my, my pal. Um, so I grew up, and I got into high school, and things changed, kind of, I mean, I got baptized and everything, and I kind of just grew up and started uh, getting involved in things like parties, drinking drugs, and believe it or not, yes, I did go to parties and all that in high school, and um, I didn't realize it, but it really, really had a negative effect on me and my relationship with God. Um, I would still pray and stuff, but it was more like um, a chore or like check off the list, you know, like make sure you pray or if you die tonight, you're going to go to hell. Like that's what I thought. I was terrified. Um, but needless to say, I still, still party, still did my thing. Um, so I graduated high school and went on to college. Um, I fell into a deep depression. I was really struggling. I, I thought I was going to be a doctor. I was really excited and started taking like all these awesome chemistry classes and I was obsessed and then I just lost all hope. All my willpower was gone. I was just deeply depressed and I would cry and cry and cry. I was like, how did this happen to me? I was so happy and everything was fine and um, I just... I started reading my Bible because my mom's like that one mom who's like, Jesus loves you, and texts you during the day and is like, oh, do you feel like a princess today because Jesus loves you? And I would say like, ha ha mom, like that's hilarious. But finally I was like, whatever happened to that like feeling of Jesus does love me, it kind of went away and it was really sad. And so I was like, where did that feeling go? Jesus loves me. So I started praying. I started reading my Bible. And um, I realized, like, I honestly was like, this is stupid. I don't like this. I was reading the Gospels. I heard that if you start in the Gospels, that's the best place to start. And so I started reading the Gospels. And I was like, why does Jesus talk in parables? Like, this is so confusing. I don't like it. And I got really discouraged and just shut my Bible. But... I did that for about a week, and I remember being like gung-ho, like, I'm going to read my Bible every night, and like, hopefully Jesus will talk to me, and then he did it. So, I got further and further into my depression, and one night I broke down, and my mom was like, you're going to have to go get treatment for this, like, this is bad. So, that was kind of my breaking point. Um, I went in my room, and I was like, okay, one last try, like, God, please answer me. So I'm just going to read you guys a verse that night. It was it was literally the craziest thing. So I opened my Bible to Psalm 13 and it says, How long, O oh Lord, will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? How long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? 
How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Consider and answer me, O Lord my God. Light up my eyes, lest I sleep in death. Lest my enemy say I have prevailed over him. Um, see where they go. Lest my foes rejoice because I am shaken. But I have trusted in your steadfast love. My heart shall rejoice in your salvation. I will sing to the Lord because he has dealt bountifully with me. So, uh, before that, I, um, I was praying to God and I felt like, oh my this brick wall was just in between me and God. Like, none of my prayers were being answered. None of I kind of felt like God didn't hear me at all. And then I read that, and I was like, hear me the whole time. I just realized that my sin and everything that I had put in between my relationship with God um, really built up a wall between us. And um, so it really just took, like, that breaking point to um, break me out of my stubbornness and my idols that I had in my life to realize that I needed to serve God. So, um, yeah, after that, I just, I found joy. I had this joy that I just had to serve God. So I had been uh, taking classes on Tuesday nights, and I had been wanting to go to Momentum for probably a whole year, and I just never got to. And finally, I, like, juggled my schedule around so that I could go to Momentum. And I finally went, and I met Amritha. <laughs> this is like straight out of depression coming to momentum and she greets me at the door and she's like hi <laughs> and it was I was like people are so nice here and immediately I, sw I don't know if this really happened like or it might have been me just thinking it was happening but I swear she asked me to hang out like every day <laughs> And she was like, come hang out with me, come get coffee with me, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I have a friend, and this is so awesome, and she loves Jesus, and great. So I, I was really excited, and so I got plugged into Momentum and immediately started serving, and I rededicated my life, and Jesus has never been so present in my life. Um, obviously, there's times where maybe he won't answer your prayer exactly the way you want it to, but he's there, and I would just encourage you guys to, um, if you're in a season of struggling, that jump into serving because you you have accountability here. You have people that keep you grounded and people that keep you on track. And if you're struggling with depression or whatever, um, just get involved. And um, through people loving you and through experiences in the church, God will minister to you. And so that's how it happened for me. I just started serving and making great friends, and uh, God spoke to me through that. So uh, I was a prisoner to my bondage. I was a prisoner to all of my idols, and now I'm a servant of the one true God. Woo! Awesome. Thanks, Becca. Wow. What a great story. God is changing lives. I'm telling you what, every week is happening. There's some people here, you might be like, I'm going through some things. I believe God has a plan for you. I believe God can give all of us life. God's not afraid of your mistakes or anything. He can turn any situation.